Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. We are heading to the Hamptons with The View's Sunny Hostin. She's out with her latest beach read. It's called Summer on Sag Harbor. And she shares why she chose to highlight that Bayside community in her new book. But we start in Hollywood with a talented costume designer with Massachusetts roots, Ruth E. Carter. And the Oscar goes to Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Ruth Carter. She has worked on some of the most memorable and prolific films, creating iconic costumes that represent history and culture, from small productions to blockbusters. She is the first black woman to win an Academy Award twice in the category of costume design. Ruth E. Carter is out with a new book. It's called The Art of Ruth E. Carter, Costuming Black History and the Afro Future, from Do the Right Thing to Black Panther. Ruth, thank you for joining us. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. You know, this book is beautiful. It's full of photos, never before seen sketches and, and mood boards. Now, for three decades, you've created some of the most recognizable and iconic costumes in Hollywood. Tell us how you got your start. Oh, I started with Spike Lee, um, but even before before film came into my life, I was doing costumes for theater. I was down at Stage West in Springfield, Mass. It's called City Stage now. Uh, and then I went to the Santa Fe Opera and I did opera costumes as an intern. And then I jumped in my Volkswagen Rabbit, drove across country to Los Angeles, only to meet a New Yorker named Spike Lee. And he and I did uh, 12 plus films together. That's fabulous. You know, I have the school day poster framed what? in my office as a matter of you fact you were are you a part of school days Why I wasn't is it a part of school office? days but uh, I hosted the screening here in Boston I see yes yes very good yeah so nice. tell us about that let's start with school days and and that early experience with Spike and and how your relationship with him really evolved into something else Yes, I was living in Los Angeles in a little studio apartment overlooking the Hollywood sign. And I was doing freelance work and Spike Lee came to see one of the shows I was the designer on. It was a dance company in La uh, South Central Los Angeles and they were dancing to Stevie Wonder's music. And Spike uh, was telling me how to get uh, more film experience. I, he, he suggested that I go to UCLA or USC to the film studies department and sign up to volunteer on a student thesis project. I did uh, before I knew it. I was hearing quiet on the set and rolling uh, on a student project. And then one morning, very early before the sun came up, I got a call. I said, hello, the other person said, Ruth. I said, hello, Ruth, hello. And he says, this is the man of your dreams. <laughs> and I said, Denzel? <laughs> and he said, no, this is Spike. I want you to do my first um, studio film, uh, School Days. And so we um, set up in New York in his uh, office, which was a converted firehouse uh, in Brooklyn. And uh, we started prepping for school days. And then we transferred everything to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, over at Morehouse, where he was from. We, we shot at Morehouse and Spelman and, and really immersed ourselves. But I had gone to an HBCU, you know, I'm a Hampton graduate. So the subject matter was very familiar to me. I, sure. I could do it and I knew it. And well, you know, so the costumes you designed for school days really uh, spoke to the audience in terms mm -hmm. of the division between the sororities, the, the colorism, which was an underpinning of the story in school days. Yeah. The, the, the costumes spoke to us uh, as well as the actors and actresses. Yes, and uh, you know the whole pledging process, uh, the whole um, culture of uh, HBCUs, college life, um, all of that was rolled into one, and uh, we had a great time creating those images and telling that story. Now that was your start, but uh, you have moved along over your career. We talked about winning. Uh, 
Oscars, two Oscars. You've been nominated for two other Oscars. You know, you've gone from period pieces to Afrofuturism. And how have you developed such a wide range in the clothing and costumes that you design? Yes, I mean, uh, this journey to the Oscar stage was was not easy. Uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. I mean, long before they invented Spank, so you know how hard <laughs> my job was. But, you know, the the journey was, uh, there's so many films. Uh, I, I think I counted like, I don't know, 60 or so projects that I've worked on. I did the pilot for Seinfeld. I did In Living Color. I did I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. I did Babs. I did The Five Heartbeats. You know, I went through a period when filmmaking um, was um, opening up to Black filmmakers like Robert Townsend and Keenan Ivory weigh-ins and they all hired me so I would finish one film and then on the west coast Robert Townsend was calling me to do his films so I could start all over again if there was something that I didn't learn I could learn relearn it or I could do it better and throughout having a very rigorous career I mean I did not stop I was like a freight train running <laughs> and uh, I did like two sometimes three movies a year back then you had maybe three months of prep and two or three months of shooting and then you were done so wow. I could fit two films in, in, in one year, and it just laid out perfectly like that for me. Hey, Ruth Carter, you're going to stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 